Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the second day of the Evergreen International Online Conference. Thank you to the Evergreen Indiana Library Consortium for providing the Zoom platform for this track of the conference. And thank you to Equinox Open Library Initiative for sponsoring the live captioning for the online conference. All of the sessions and roundtables are being recorded and will be made available following the conclusion of the conference. Please take a, a moment to acquaint yourself with the webinar tools if you haven't already. You're encouraged to use the chat feature for communication. If you'd like to send a message to everyone in the room, please make sure to select all panelists and attendees from the drop down menu. There is also a Q&A feature available that I will be monitoring. Now I'd like to welcome Lynn Floyd. Lynn is the supervisor for the management of information systems at the Indiana State Library. She has been involved with documentation for the Evergreen ILS since 2009 and is an active member of the documentation interest group. Welcome Lynn, I'll let you take it away. You gonna stop sharing your screen? All right. Welcome, folks. Get this up. All right. We're gonna start talking about ASCII doc. Um, ASCII doc, um, for those who don't know, is a markup language and that Evergreen uses for its documentation. For those that don't know what a markup language is, it's a way in which to format text that can be displayed for various formats. Um, the Evergreen documentation um, has its documentation in HTML, PDF, EPUB format, and we have a script that allows us to translate the ASCII doc markup that we write into all these different formats so we don't have to. Uh, one quote I've recently read across, it was documentation is intended to help a user of the software understand how to achieve their goals. And that's the goal of what documentation is. And ASCII doc is the one way that we actually here at Evergreen actually do it. Um, there's a couple of tools I wanna to talk to you about, about writing with ASCII doc. You have your basic text editor or code editor. That's how you, that's what you use. Um, Notepad++, plus plus, your Visual Studio Code, Vim, Atom, Notepad. Um, on my screen now, on the left, this is Visual Studio Code. Most developers use a black background on this so they can see the text differences. I prefer not a black background, so I've customized mine a little bit. But here are also three other different varieties of different text editors. Um, on the left here, this is um, Notepad++, and you can see, you can set up Notepad++ to see some of the markup that you can do. In the middle of this, this is a simple Notepad. Every version of Windows comes with Notepad. Um, it is the basic of basic text editors. And on the very far right, this is Atom. And Atom does do some of the markup, and you see you have the basic text on it back background that a lot of developers use. Me personally, I do not uh, for that. And then you also have interpreters. What interpreters do is allow you to interpret that, that text that you've put in there. So um, if you look at the screen now, you have the ASCII doc on the left. And on the right, this is ASCII doc. Um, I can tell it's ASCII doctor because there's a little icon that says it's my ASCII doctor preview. And what it does is it takes all this extra code that you've put in here and actually make the text do what you want it to do. Um, so that's what an interpreter does. And ASCII doctor is one of ones that I like um, because there's a couple things you can use with ASCII doctor. This is before the code, you can turn it off so you can actually see the code. Um, or the other options, you can go into options, scroll all the way down to your theme of style sheet, and I actually have the Evergreen style sheet loaded. 
So I can apply that, close that out, and now let's turn off ASC dot, turn it back on. And this is what it would look like in Evergreen, in the Evergreen documentation. So you can see what it's gonna look like in the Evergreen documentation, so you can actually see how things lay out. Uh, because if you notice, it was, it's slightly different than the other version that I had, especially when it comes to like the way titles and, and things are done. Oh. Let me go back to the version. And there's also, ASCII Doctor does come with a set of um, themes or style sheets. Um, and you can also create your own style sheet to add into here. So I'm gonna go back to the call anyone, which is the one I prefer when I'm testing code, code because it has a lot of the features that I want to look at and stuff. So you can see all of that. So those are you, you now that's the Ask Your Doctor Chrome extension that I have been using. Here is the URL. The slides and things will be available afterwards, so you um, so you can get them. Um, you can also do a GIST on GitHub or a DocGIS. DocGIS is a GIST that within ASCII Doctor, the website itself. Because um, there is also a whole ASCII Doctor program and stuff that you can install. But for the basic simple things, the Chrome ASCII Doctor Chrome plugin works the best. And Visual Studio Code also has a plugin that you can use, but it's very temperamental. Let me just put it that way. All right, so what we're gonna go over this today is some basic formatting, your basic text formatting, line, paragraph, and all these different basic formats, so how to format the text within ASCII doc. And this is, we're gonna start with some basic format, bold. Bold is one of those things you wanna be able to, I mean, we use a lot of bold, because it makes things stand out. And bold's one of the easy ones. Just put asterisks on the front and back of whatever words you said. And make sure there's no spacing between the asterisk, asterisk and that first letter or the last letter. Spacing is important within ASCII docs. Spaces mean things within ASCII docs. Italics, underlined colored text is pound signs with uh, whatever the text is. One thing about colored text, if you ever use color text, it can only be one of 16 colors. And those 16 colors are the H standard HTML color names if Wikipedia ever loads. Well, apparently Wikipedia is not loading. Um, that can be there. Now, you can also do what's called a pass-through text. And what pass-through text is allows you to use one of these previous formatting nomenclature formatting pieces and passes and it, it actually prints those instead of actually instead of interprets them. And I'm gonna show you that. All right, so if you look over here to your left, this is like I said, this is bold text right here. And as you see how I have to ask you, now if you come up here to look at your basic formatting over here in this document, you can see how it, it bolded it. And you have italics, and this is italics. Now this is bold in italics, so you can use multiple formats um, together. This is your color. So let's just take, and I want to choose green. And if you can look at it, it actually changed it to a green text. But I'm actually gonna do something. I'm gonna bold this text also. And now you see that actually is green text in bolded. Green is not a really good color to see. Let's go blue. All right, blue's a better color to see. And you can see how it changed the text. Now, Ask Your Doctor does have a refresh rate on it. I'm going to show you. So I, we could do this and see the, the changes here and it changes automatically here. I have it set up for a two second delay. So whenever I make changes to this, and the other thing is Visual Studio Code has an automatic save feature. 
Um, so whenever I make a change to the code in Visual Studio Code, it automatically changes it. I then have ASCII Doctor set for a two second refresh, so it automatically is refreshing my document. So every time I make a change on the doc in Visual Studio Code, it automatically refreshes it in ASCII doc. Um, which is the reason why I'm using them. And this is that pass through text I was talking about. I see how I have the bold with the plus the signs, and you should see how the bold actually has the asterisk. Now, whatever I want to put in here, those two um, let's do I can do, and it's just gonna pass everything through. Now I can actually. Now, if I actually make these outside of the plus marks, it'll actually, because they're outside those three plus marks, it actually passes that through. And you see how, if you look at the example here, um, It, it got the, the, the asterisk is there, but not the underlines, but it did italicize it because the, pa the, the italicize was outside of the pass through text. Now that's your basic text formatting. Now the next thing we want to come up to is paragraph formatting. There are two types of paragraph formatting. There's things you think about, line breaks and paragraph breaks. Line breaks are separate than paragraph breaks. Now, um, with the line break, you have to have a space and then the plus at the end of the line. That actually tells the system that you want that next line of text on the exact next line. Now, a paragraph break is you just do an extra line between the text and it makes it a paragraph break. And uh, I'll show you those. These are your line and paragraph breaks. And now, Here's some, a basic block of text right here. Now, without any line or paragraph breaks, this is the way it would just be displayed. One, one sentence right after the next. Now, if we add the actual line break, which is that space in plus, like you see here, you see how it actually puts each line of text on the next line. Now, if we put in the paragraph break, which is just that extra line between them. Okay. You see how it breaks it up and into actual different paragraphs. Because of the way paragraphs are done in ASCII doc, there's, this is the way it happens. Um, but always remember, if you want it to actually just run on, it doesn't care. If you want it to, actually break a line, always add that space in the plus at the end of it. That way you get that line break. Okay, that's your line in paragraph breaks. That's something I just learned really recently. <laughs> um, okay, next thing we're going to talk about is headings. Headings are really important with, especially with us going to Antora. Um, and, and don't miss Blake's presentation right after this. It'll be on Intor. Um, all major document documents within Intor must start at the level zero. What is the level zero? Level zero is that main header, that main title page. So if we go back for example, this is the main title page. Okay, if you go, and that's this right here. Okay. That is what the main document, what is the doc, main document's title? Because what Antor does is it actually interprets that into everything from the title of the page to even the title of the page in the tab itself. Okay. And then you actually have the different sub levels after that. Your sub level one, level one, sub level two, sub. And, and if you notice that every after, for every level, it gets another equals marks on the left and the right. 
Now, this is also when I'm talking about when spacing is important. Uh, it, let me go back. Is that it's an eagle marks space, then the title space eagle marks. Now, the second level, the second series of marks is not necessarily, but that's first series right here. Went back one time. Go back. This little mark right here. Okay, come on, annotate. Right here. I'll get it. That's the part that's important. Okay. And also, because of the way Antor does paging and to increase the effectiveness of the documentation, really. Um, one of the things is, is you see, change the different color. This piece right here, that is the table of contents. Okay. Um, the table of contents will allow you to create the nice table of contents on the beginning of each page. As you see, this is our text doc, and you see I have the table of contents here. That's what TOC stands for. And it creates this nice table of contents um, that you can, that Antor will actually use. Okay. Now, the next thing is that we want to talk about action sequences within the documentation itself. Okay, action sequences are very important because these are the things that go click here, then here, then here. So, as a standard evergreen, you have administration, workstation, print templates, okay, or circulation, register patron. That's the direction you want the who you're writing the documentation for to go. Um, so that's your action sequence. And they should, and there's a couple of things about action sequences. They should always be bolded. And when you write them out, it's a dash greater than sign between them. And in, it's a dash greater than sign between them. And it actually forwards it, it actually, the interpreter is actually interpreted into the nice arrow. Um, so if you look at here, I've got a couple of administration. This is the way I have the action, action sequences and we go click on, and this is the way it interprets the action sequences. Yes, I have the text blown up really big for y'all. So that's your action action sequences. Uh, lists, bulleted lists. Actually, bulleted lists are really easy, and also ordered lists are really easy. And this is another case where spacing is very important. A bulleted list is really just an asterisk bullet, asterisk in the next bullet. Or if you want to tab in, it's a dash or asterisk, asterisk. Just like see, so you have the dash right here, and And then you have the bullet here. And there's your standard bulleted list. And you also have an ordered list. It's a, it's a dot space, and then what you want, whenever you, and the dot space in the number, or a dot dot space gives you a letter. Um, it's your lower alphabetical, and then a dot 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 gives you the lower Roman. I have too many ends in Roman. Um, so here's your bullet list. And one thing I'm going to point out to you about a bullet list, you see I have a, I have a dot here, then the bullet list is in bold. Well, that dot is tag is tells, sets the title of the bulleted list. And you can see it also down here in the example in the ordered list set down right here. I have that dot. And now you notice I do not have a space between that dot and 
um, the word. It's because the dot without the space says this is a title of a of an object, not a title that should go into a heading. It's not a heading. It's a title of an object. Oh, I have the slides out of order. Um, so, for example, this is that bulleted list, and this is how it produces the bulleted list. Now, an ordered list, and this is an ordered list, and we're going to talk about these plus signs in this similar text here in a second. Um, this is an ordered list, and you have the one, the two, and then A lists order list as another. And you have, and you have the, see it here, it says a letter. So that's this letter. And then I have a dot number again. That didn't actually come out the way it was supposed to. Yeah, it did. Um, and then you have the, and you see, if you does the two dot, it's a lower alpha. And you have the three dot, it goes into the lower Roman numerals. Um, now, let's go. Too many screens. Um, the note about the ordered list, and you notice how I had the plus signs in some of these ordered lists. And if you come over here and you got the number one number list, some text, and then the number two and number list, for, let's take out these plus signs and I'll show you what happens. You have one number, some text, and then it starts the ordered list over again. Well, it's not necessarily what you want all the time. You want that ordered list to go one, and then there's like you want to stick an image or something in there. Um, for example, let's go over to this. This is the copy location. So you see I'll have here an ordered list of instructions, and then I have the plus signs with the image. Now, show this, move down. Um, now you see how it makes it one, two, three, and four, but without those plus signs, you see how it's one, two, three, and then goes back to one. Well, in order to, to continuing the number one, the numbering, you have to add those plus signs in there. The order to be able to, for the system to be able to know to continue the numerizations. Um, um, so that's what the plus, and you see how this actually did that. So if we added these plus signs back in here, you see how it moved, also moved the text over. It also indented the text back in with the number and sequence. So you see the numbers on the left, on the left hand side and the numerous secrets where um, on the right hand side, I mean, and then it indented the, the other text to make, so you see the numerizations. Um, but those pluses are very important within that. Images. We all like images. I have a fascination of hedgehogs, so a uh, couple of things about images. Uh, they should all be in the PNG format. That's the preferred format that uh, the documentation interest groups refer them in. Um, they must all have alt text. That's for ADA compliancy, make the images a little more available. Um, and screenshots should be smaller than 150 pixels wide when possible. Um, so when you do your screenshots, I know most of us have these grandiose monitors. And when we do a screenshot, it um, we need to translate it down to a smaller pixel width in order for the documentation to um, be a little more 
useful. Uh, the other thing is that you can also put links into images. So if you have an image and you want to click it, um, link it out to another image, um, you put whatever the alt text in, comma, and then link equals, and then the, the link. Like this is a a uh, link to the actual. This actually will show this image because that is this image, and then it'll allow you to be able to click on that image and actually this link actually opens up the image into the Open Clip Art um, documentation. So if we go back up to my images here, um, always include your alt text. Let's see, here's my image link here, and it says cute creature. So if you hover over it, it should tell you cute creature, but it, apparently it doesn't. Um, but also this is a link. I have it linking. So if I click on it, it links out to another Wikipedia page about hedgehogs. Um, but as you can see in the code here, how I did that. Now, you know, also notice I have a Windows equals blank. That will actually allow you to follow, allows it to actually open up the, the link in a new tab. Um, there's also several other Windows equals whatever but it allows you to open up the, 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 the link into a new tab. Um, the other thing is, is you see where I have the actual image stored slash media. Um, all images should be in that slash media folder. There is a media folder where all the images are within the documentation. Um, and all your images should be there. And if you're doing screenshots, Make sure your screenshots are appropriately named. Don't name them something weird. Um, you see how here on the showing locations, I have it in the media folder and I have the image name as copy location dash two dot PNG. Now, and this is this image because this was copy location one. Um, so, make sure your image names are fairly self-explanatory so someone can go in and looking at them oh okay this is an image about copy locations all right linkages excuse me i had a sneeze bless you Sorry, folks, it just hit me. Um, Summer in a new spot. Um, linkages are very important. They allow you to link from one spot to document to another spot in the document within the same document. Um, allow you to click from one URL, click it to make a URL um, link to another website entirely. Um, another thing, a linkage is. Um, you want to link to another document within this whole set of documents. Um, so looking at this example here, I will, actually this one's a really good one. You see how I have this deleting right here. That is a linkage. That's the anchor for the linkage. Um, if you scroll up, Targo on word where um, you see right here in this section right here is deleted is this is one of the options up here and you see here here is the the, the linkage deleting that was where I, like what I called it and it says see deleting a shelving location so this actually links you down to this the leading shelving location um, section. Um, that's what a linkage will does. It allows you to go up and down a document. It's like, okay, I don't need to know all this. And that's what actually 
create all these are actually internal linkages when it creates the table of contents. Um, go up to the very beginning here. Um, here's this is another linkage it says right here. This is a more info link because I have a section called more info and it points you into a um, the, what the text is I want it want you to be able to click on. So I click on here and this is where you can find more information. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom here, these are my linkages. These are actually these are actually websites that you can actually visit. And you can see how with the website, all you have to do is put the URL and then in square brackets, put what you want it to actually say on the sheet. It's really simple. Best way to do website linkages I've ever seen in any format whatsoever. That's my personal opinion. Um, but you can also do a link within and inside the internal document. I don't have one set up. Um, but it's basically the same way. But you have to use the link instead of. I hate this thing that doesn't do backwards. Uh, okay, that was linkage. Glossary terms. If you add terms that are not under standard terminology, please add your terms to the glossary. Now, there is a glossary now that has been added. For those who have never seen it, Oh, here's your color terms. It's finally loaded. Um, so here's the three, four dots. Um, here's a consolidated HTML. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, not all the way, there is a glossary. There's actually two glossaries. Oh, well. oh. One of them actually works and the other one doesn't. And this is the glossary as it sits right now. Now I did do this glossary, so anything and everything in this glossary is available to be edited and changed. I don't care. Some of these definitions I made up, so um, I can read, tell you that. But yeah, you can actually click on the dog glossary and it'll take, go down to those these are all internal linkages. Oh no, because that is actual. Um, so there are internal linkages in, in, in here and links to other sources. But to actually, people, please put words in the glossary, especially if it's a word that, that we know but let's say someone brand new to Evergreen would know. I mean, things like what's the differences in a showing location? What is SIP? Now, if you go actually go searching, searching for SIP, you get three different versions of SIP. What SIP are we actually require? Are we actually talking about? And that is the 3 m version. And I don't have that hyperlink. Um, SRU, one that took me forever to figure out, Yowza. Y-A-O-U-S is yet another organizational unit setting. Okay. So that one took me a while to figure out what it's supposed to be. But yeah, um, Z3950. I mean, anything you think anybody would want to know what the meaning is. XML, I mean, I put some really providers. Uh, pickup library. What do we mean by pickup library? Those are things that were in the glossary. And please put more words in this glossary. There's lots of them out there. And this is what I've sat down and picked up and said, okay, these are the words that we know we need to define. And I know there's a bunch more out there. That's my whole thing about the glossary. 
But putting words in the glossary is really simple. It's a term one colon de definition one, term two, double colon definition two. I mean, it's really easy. Um, currently, the glossary is only um, manually alphabetized. So make sure you alphabetize your glossary terms when you add them. Um, so if we go back, you should see this is your glossary here, term one, definition one, term two, definition two. Now you see how I have this plus one, the, the space plus here, and then I have definition 2.1. You can have more than one definition to a glossary term, okay? And you have term three, definition three, um, you have definitely have more than one definition per glossary term. And these are ways, this is, excuse me, this is the way in which to actually do this. Because otherwise, you, if you don't add that plus, you remember, you don't add that plus, it just like put a space between the sentences. But if you want to actually make them as separate lines, make sure you add that plus. Any questions at this point? I have a question. Yes. Um, and then I am also monitoring the chat and the question and answer if there are any others. Can, so this, um, the list of the commands or, or the attributes or however we're describing those for ASCII doc, is that located in the GitHub repository for the documentation? No. Okay, is, is that? I have the ASCII doc, or com ASCII doc commands are, stand, are basically standard across all of ASCII doc. So I um, just Google that? You can just Google it. Um, the one, this Paraman cheat sheet, is one I use a lot. Okay. And basically what it does, he goes through and actually does through, goes through in all the different types of, and there's a lot in there that I'm not even going over. So, so that, that so ADOC, do, that ADOC thing that, that you're sharing with us right now on your screen, that's your, in your own, your personal repo? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the ASCII doc, text a doc thing. Um, this documentation on your left is in my own personal repo. I, um, I will share it out. That'd be anybody wants to use it. Awesome. Um, it, um, how do you, how do you want to share that? Do you have a specific uh, I'll way? It, to... I'll throw it in my GitHub. Okay. Um, and then I also have a question about the table of contents. Mm hmm um, is that then populated? Yeah, I'll let you get back there. Is that then populated based on those things that are marked as different layers of headings? Yes. Okay. And it just automatically pulls those if you have defined a table of contents. That is correct. Okay. Now I'm going to actually, Blake, are you here by chance? I'm I have not a, quite done yet. I, well, it's a question that relates to both of you. Well, I, well let, I'll be in Blake's present at Blake's presentation. Okay. So ask it then. Okay. Because he may answer it. Okay, because it has to do with the alphabetizing. Okay. So of, of, of the glossary. Yeah, and, and whether That's just or not, done manually. Right. I know it's done manually now. Um, I don't. I don't know, know if Antora they, will deal with it. Okay. No. Okay. Is this basically one huge ASCII doc? Um, right. Okay. And okay, those are my questions. Does anybody else have any questions? You can either put in the question and answer thing, or you can put into the chat. So here's the actual. This is a newer version of it that I haven't pushed out yet. Because um, apparently I got A and B done, but none of the rest of them. 
because um, I actually did an A, a B. I was going to do C, D, E, and F, but apparently. So. So how, Lynn, if somebody. This is what it actually looks like. If somebody wanted to collaborate with you on, let's just use the the glossary as an example right now. What is the best mechanism for someone oh, to um, to help? Uh, well, I mean, the glossary as it sits right now is in the repo, in the Evergreen repo. Okay, it's there for anybody. To edit. If anybody wants to go edit this and add the links the way they're supposed to be. I mean, especially all the X references and um, if they want to jazz it up, I won't, I, it's in the repo. It's open source. Go have fun at it. Okay. Just because I'm the one who actually set it out. Sure. Doesn't mean I'm the one who. Um, that you own it. That I own it. Right. It's okay. not owned by me. It's owned by the evergreen international whatever you want to call ourselves okay the it's not owned by yeah the okay it's not owned by me yes it was a project that i took on and contributed sure so okay thank you those are my questions all right so let's go back the other thing i want to talk about i got a couple more slides i've got like four more slides here Adding comments. Comments within documentation is it's hit and miss. Um, why you would want to add a comment? Now, if if you look at my example here, I do have some comments in here. Like this is a bullet list. This is an ordered list. More of to say that yes, this is an. But uh, there are reasons why to do. I can look. Quit that. I want to go there. Nope. I closed it. Now, at one point in time, I did have some documentation in the Evergreen. In the Evergreen glossary, I would. This would be a good place to put documentation that says. Please make sure you alphabetize your words correctly. Please um, use the format of term, colon, uh, definition, um, colon, colon, definition. Things like that are the reason why you would use um, the glossary, or, or use a comment. When you want to make something like this that is going to be used by multiple, 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 multiple people or will be editing it in this particular document, Comments in a document like this would make really great sense of how to attribute the information back to this particular page. Um, so Ruth, all your comments about it could be attributed to the comments. Um, could be added as comments on that page. It's like, this is how you contribute to the, the glossary. I, indexing is another major important piece of things with the evergreen documentation. So let's go back to our evergreen documentation. Let's go back a page. So while you're getting there, Tiffany had a question um, about contributing. And her question was, would that be done through making a Git branch if we wanted to add to the glossary? Right. We would actually make a new, um, just like you would contribute documentation to anything else, any other piece of documentation. You make a working branch with it and do a commit. Tiffany, does that does that answer that adequately for you? Okay. I'm not going on with how to do that because it's not the easiest thing for me to do. Sure. Um, okay, indexing. These index terms here are all created by us putting actually index terms within the documentation. And there's two different ways to do index terms. You can do index term colon and within square brackets, primary, your secondary, your tertiary, or you can do triple paragraphs, primary, secondary, tertiary. 
and use terms are relevant to the topic, so don't put anything weird in the index terms. I know we're all librarians and we like to index everything. Um, use index terms. This is also where you can actually put also you see and see also references. For actually, and for example, the index term here, marked back import export. We know that as is mark batch import export. Okay. Well, all of the developers and everything know that as Vandalay. So you want to be able to, hey, let's go look at Van. I have a see also a C reference of Vandalay or see also Vandalay. Actually, Vandalay should be more of see also. Or another way to put it is put the index term of Vandalay and put C mark match import export. You can also do this is see also the evergreen mark file upload mark file upload. Um, that's also another great way to actually put that actually in the indexing. Um, trying to see if I had a see out reference and a see also reference in here. I don't think there's one in there that I know of right off the top of my head. But you see how invoice, I mean, invoice, invoices, invoice menus, introduction, electronic, electronic invoicing. These are all actually caused by us putting these index terms in there. So the indexing, actually index terms are actually, are able to create the index. Um, and then indexing actually, actually also helps with the searching of documents. Because we all know that there's always this magic Google search up top. No, that we don't apparently we don't have any currency also in C references. Um, so we have these magical terms. But with with the indexing, the, it actually allows us to search the documents. That documents get a higher, kind of a little higher up in in the list of of the indexing of the search. And here you can see these are my index terms for this document: is the ASCII doc and the ASCII doc style C style guide. Um, So these are index terms. And if you see where I have copy locations, and these are my index terms for here. Now, if you notice, let me go back and turn on ASCII. These index terms do not show up in the display whatsoever. The index terms only exist. They are here, but as soon as you, they're not, they're not there. They only exist for, so that ASCII not knows when it creates the index, how to actually index where these indexes actually get. As this particular page has not been committed yet, um, I can't show you this in the live doc, how the indexing works. Oh yeah, I can't, I do have one I can show you though. Um, H I J M N O P R. Receipts. Receipt templates. Receipt template editor. And you see how a receipt template editor says print receipts templates. Now, that is because in this actual doc here, there is those index terms. And I know they're there because I put them there. <laughs> So if we actually wanted to actually go look at that one, let's just edit notepad. Uh, you see how these index terms, they're here. So when we see the recent template editor, and that's our index term, so it actually comes to this print, print receipt templates. Here, those index terms 
or there. Okay, so index your documents. Even if you just index the title of the document, it actually puts the index, it, it makes an index term in the index. So when people go looking for receipt templates, I need to make some corrections. Um, you can see how that is done. Um, there is a dig documentation style guide. Let me see if I can pull this up. In the wiki. Um, it tells you about the table contents, how to change your headings, um, some general things to avoid, the formatting, um, the header prefix syntax. And we do prefer this format over the previous format here. This Antor likes this format much better. Um, and it goes into some wordings for you to use. Um, use consistent action words, for example, use enter, check, or uncheck, select um, the button, tab, or if you want to select menu action, your action sequences. Um, be consistent in these, and these are the wordings that we want to be, us to always be consistent with. Um, and I'm running out of time, so. Oh, there's my slides. All right, where to go for help? These are your Power Man cheat sheet. Always love him. The Ask you that user guide is another one. Some of y'all know your mail. Your mail is res. Um, he actually did a dick presentation uh, a good while ago before he left Evergreen. Um, and he says his presentation and slides. I refer back to his every, every so often. And any questions you'll have on it, um, there is always the open ILS documentation list. Any questions? Anyone? Anyone? And I will also give a shout out for the uh, documentation interest group. Um, I'm not sure when the next meeting is, if Debbie puts that into the chat, you'll be able to see July the 9th. And there's usually a working portion uh, during that meeting and it meets in IRC. Yes, so. we actually have a tendency to um, meet, do business for about 30 minutes, if that, and then the rest of it, we have, we try to help each other out with anything. If you're having issues with something, um, we will actually gladly try to help you. The mesh -hash header cool. format style was driven by us humans more than indoor. For clarification, the mustache header. <gasps> okay. Antoro works with, oh, mustache meaning on either side of the, right. um, the whatever the, the, the text thing is there. We humans yeah. like mustache style better. I, I mean, so many comments, but I'm just going to let that one all fly away. Okay, if there are no more questions in here, thank you, Lynn. I'm available. If y'all have questions, just let me know. The next session in this track will begin at 2 p.m. Eastern time, 11 a.m. Pacific time. Blake is going to be continue talking about documentation and he's gonna be introducing the Antora documentation site generator. So we'll, we'll see y'all then if you're in here. <laughs>